Hey guys, so as I've said in my previous video, I'll show you at what graphics settings you can play games at. With AMD's new Ryzen 3 2200G Raven Ridge APU featuring integrated Vega graphics. Obviously you would get a better frame rate when going for the slightly more expensive model, namely the Ryzen 5 2400G. After all it offers 4 more CPU threads and instead of just 8 Vega compute units on this 2200G, the 2400G comes with 11. 11. But then again I find this Ryzen 3 APU more appealing due to its fairly low price. Before doing any kind of testing, I went into the BIOS and gave the Vega 8 iGPU 2 GB of memory to work with. On default that's usually set to something like auto. So if you want the best performance, give the integrated graphics unit as much memory as possible. As far as I know, 2 GB is the maximum. So let's start with Battlefield 1, alright? Let's start out high with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 The X12 is disabled since Battlefield 1 doesn't want to start with it enabled for some reason. HDR is off as well and as for the graphics preset it's set to low. And the performance isn't looking too bad actually. We're in the mid 30s in terms of frame rate which can be considered playable even though I do have my problems since I'm used to something slightly higher. To increase the FPS let's lower the resolution down to 900p. And as you can see I'm now in the 60s and sometimes in the 50s, which is very playable, no questions. Now to try out something with the Vulkan API, Doom. 1080p here, no AA and the low preset. And it seems I'm not too far off from the 40 FPS mark. Pretty good actually, but I expected a little more FPS here. So once again I lowered the resolution to 900p and now I'm almost hitting 50 FPS, sometimes even more. I can live with that. The next game, Far Cry Primal, known to be a fairly taxing game. Still let's try 1080p at low settings. Now it is somewhat playable but not a good experience at all, at least for me. We are below the 30 FPS mark. So to get more we have to go all the way down to 720p which results in over 50 frames per second, sometimes even 60, sometimes in the 40s. But hey, it's a demanding game. Something that should be easier to handle is GTA 5. I'll go for 1080p, no AA, normal settings, but pretty much as low as it gets. We are well in the 50s, sometimes even slightly over 60, but most of the time we are hovering around the 55 FPS mark, which is decent. What I'm going to do now is set the resolution to 900p, FXAA on, 50% for these bars right here, high settings, 2 times reflection MSAA and 4 times AF. The graphics are looking really sweet now, except for the vehicle reflections. For some reason there seems to be something wrong with that when using a Vega GPU. But yeah, the frame rate is pretty good when considering the settings we are actually playing at. Next up something that really pushes GPUs. Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, the X12 enabled, no AA and the lowest preset. I'm getting like 30 FPS in that game at those settings. Pretty stable 30 in fact. Aiming is a challenge though. Let's try 900p real quick. And nope, still hard to aim. So let's settle for 720p. This gives me about 50 FPS more or less. That works for me. In Skyrim Special Edition at 1080p low settings and no AA, I'm getting around 50 to 55, which certainly is good. When going a bit lower though, 900p low, but but FXAA enabled, I'm at about 65 to 70 FPS now. That's a fantastic result actually. And now as for the final game of this demo, The Witcher 3. We'll start things off at 1080p once again, with everything else set to low. That's a demanding game title as well it seems. I'm slightly below the 30 FPS mark. We need to lower the resolution quite a bit therefore, in order to get to something like 50 FPS. And yes, that did help a very playable experience with 50 plus FPS now. So as you've seen this Ryzen 3 2200G is quite a capable APU. Of course we aren't getting super duper great performance, but one has to keep in mind the pretty low price it comes in. Just a hundred US dollars for this APU with a pretty good integrated graphics unit. If you're on a super tight budget, this might be a good choice. I in fact was surprised it performed as well as it did. I expected much worse. 
course. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.